So I posted this poll on the community tab and I hear you all, I know, Franz Boaz has been a request for a long time now and we're getting to it today. Really quickly, if you're new here, my name is Olivia and I make videos about anthropology every single Monday. So uh, let's do it. So Franz Boaz was born on July 9th, 1858 and passed away on December 22nd, 1942. Now Boaz is from modern day Germany, but it's known for being an American anthropologist. Something that I didn't realize before researching for this video was that Boaz actually spent a large chunk of his early life in Germany and didn't wind up living in America for many, many years. Now, as a young child, Boaz was really, really interested in the natural world. He read a lot of books about these topics and it's kind of some foreshadowing for what he got into later being that he is uh, considered the father of American anthropology. Boaz went to school in Germany and ultimately got a PhD in both physics and geography. Some people will argue that Boaz's background in physics actually plays a role in some of his theoretical anthropological frameworks, but others will completely disagree with you, so I would just say that it's a matter of opinion. But as Boaz got a little bit further in life, he really connected with the field of geography and ultimately did some geography research that led him to anthropology. So after going to school for physics and geography and spending a year in the military, Boaz ended up going to Baffin Island in Canada to do some geographical research between the years 1883 and 1884. Now, while Boaz was on Baffin Island, he was doing research on the Inuit communities and how they were impacted by the local environment and geography. And not only that, but how the Inuit people's migration patterns were actually impacted by the geography. Now, I would argue, and I think a lot of other people would argue as well, that Boaz's time working with the Inuit people is when his love of humans and anthropology really began. Because remember, he was looking to understand not only the geography of this region, but also how the geography impacted the people who were living there and how the geography impacted their migration patterns. And uh, yeah, that kind of set Boaz up for the path that he was going to be on for the rest of his life. During this research on Baffin Island is also when some of Franz Boaz's most famous ideas were born. One of the most notable ideas being that all cultures are created equal. Now, it may seem obvious now, but there was a time not too long ago where people did not believe that all cultures were equal to each other. They believed that one culture was superior to another, whether that be because of the technology that they had, the resources they had available to them, where in the world they were living, how they looked, among many other variables. And while Boaz was spending time with the Inuit people, he realized that that idea was a big load of crap. Through this research, he basically came to strongly, strongly oppose this idea. And this led to some of his famous frameworks and ideas that we're gonna talk about in a little bit more depth here in a second. So after his research, Boaz kind of bounced around for a little while, but he ultimately ended up in America in 1887. And if I remember correctly, he was actually stopping in New York to then go somewhere else, but he ended up staying. Now in the US, Boaz began as a curator at the American Museum of Natural History. And not only was he a huge impact on the field of anthropology, but he also had a huge impact on how museum curation was done. He suggested new ways in which curators should be presenting their artifacts, and now they're widely practiced. Some of these include displaying artifacts as they would have been used at the time, and also straying away from this idea that we should be presenting artifacts in some kind of linear, progression, evolutionary order. Which kind of, again, gets at the idea that no one culture is better than another, no one tool is more advanced and therefore superior than another. I think you get it. After being a curator at the American Museum of Natural History, he went on to become a professor of anthropology at Columbia University. Now, 
Boaz was not just some anthropology professor at Columbia University. He was the anthropology professor at Columbia University. Not only was he a professor there, he started the entire anthropology program. And on top of that, his anthropology program at Columbia University was the first one in the United States. You're starting to see now why people call him the American father of anthropology. Yeah, he did that. Also, as a side note, he also was the guy who suggested that anthropology should be broken down into four fields. And if you don't know, anthropology does have four subfields, those subfields being biology, culture, linguistics, and archaeology. And the reason we have this four-field approach it's because of Boaz. Really quickly, if you haven't liked and subscribed, definitely do that because I make videos about anthropology every single Monday. Okay, back to the video. Now I want to switch over a little bit into some of the ideas and beliefs that Boaz had. One of the first being a concept called cultural relativism. I do have a video that goes into more detail if you're curious about it, Today, we're not getting super in-depth, but basically cultural relativism is this idea that we shouldn't be evaluating cultures based on the standards of another culture. We should be evaluating cultures based on the standards of that culture. By examining cultures in a more contextualized way, you're taking away a lot of unnecessary judgment um, because a lot of bad things came from the ways that people were judging cultures during Boaz's time. So long story short, cultural relativism is a really good thing and it also exists in opposition to something called ethnocentrism, which I don't really have time to get into today. So once again, we're going to link a video that you can watch if you want to learn about it. The last thing that Boaz believed and was a big part of, I think, what makes him so great, dare I say, uh, is that he was really opposed to scientific racism. For many, many years, people believed, academics believed, that race was something based in our biology, based in science, and it was just a biological concept. But we know today that Race is not a biological thing. It's a cultural construct that we've created. Now, Boaz took part in research that basically proved that race is not biological and it is cultural, right? The idea is that we associate with it that one person or one biology could be better or worse than another. All these horrible, horrible things that came as a byproduct of scientific racism. As I'm saying this, I feel like that could be a good video to talk about because it's really interesting and horrible and yeah but my point is today we know that scientific racism is bad and we know some of these things to not be true because boaz vehemently opposed them and i'm really grateful for that and appreciative of the work that he participated in to prove that wrong. So that was my brief little dive into Franz Boas. I hope you learned something new today. If you're curious about other anthropologists such as Margaret Mead or Ruth Benedict, I do have a playlist. Fun fact, Ruth Benedict and Margaret Mead were both students of Franz Boas. So they're all they're all connected to each other. So yeah, go check out that playlist, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all next week. All right, you guys. Bye.